What's up everybody, this is Jesse from Mullen the Maker. Today I'm going over how to build a tabletop. This is my version on from start to finish on how to actually build this tabletop, but obviously there are a lot of ways to do it. This is the common way I do all my tabletops and it works out really good. They get flat, they stay stable. This is just the process I use. This video is sponsored by Delta Machinery. I use Delta Tools in my shop. They've been a sponsor of my channel for a while and I absolutely love their tools. I used their tools before they were even a sponsor, so I was really happy when they wanted to sponsor a small channel like mine. Uh, so make sure you go check out their tools. There's gonna be links below um, and let's get into the build. I start laying out to see what boards I wanna use, whether they have unique uh, grain pattern, uh, if the knots are in specific places, or and obviously to figure out the sizing of the board. After I figure out which boards I'm going to use, I use my cruiser miter saw from Delta to cut them down. Now, since there's not a flat edge, you might bind up your saw. So I always do a few cuts on the top and then I plunge cut the very end of the board and it usually allows it not to um, bind up the blade. Now I love my cruiser miter saw, it has a shadow line technology so you know exactly where you're cutting. It's a light above the blade that casts the shadow of the blade onto your wood. It makes it a lot more accurate than lasers. I absolutely love this tool, it's my favorite tool in my shop. Now once those are rough cut, I take them over to the joiner, but a couple of these boards were bigger than my joiner could handle. So my, I have an eight inch joiner and some of the boards were eight and a half to nine inches. So I take them to uh, my table saw and I cut them down. Now I take those boards now that they all can run through my joiner, I go over to my joiner and make sure that my fence is square. Once it's square, then I run through each board through the face. I do at least two passes, making sure that the whole time it, I get completely flat surface. I'll mark each board, that way I know which side to actually put against the fence face. Then I go through and I joint each edge. I only joint one edge because I'm going to be cutting these down to size to get my perfect size for my table. Now this may seem a little backwards. I know that a lot of people will just joint everything at once and then cut it. I totally get that. I think you could do it either way. This way seems to work just fine as long as you put the jointed face down onto the table saw bed and also the jointed side along the fence. So I get each board cut down on the table saw to the exact size I want so that all together they'll actually equal the exact width I want for the tabletop. Once they're all cut down to size, I arrange each board to how I want the tabletop to look. I alternate grain on each one. This will just help stabilize in the long run. I know this is kind of up for debate. Some people say you don't need to do it. Some people say you definitely need to do it. I just do it because why not do it? It's something that's very simple. So I alternate grain so it looks like a smiley face and a frowny face between each board, which is an easy way to remember and I alternate it. Once I get everything set up the way I want, I mark the ends of each board. Now I take them over to my planer. I plane them down and I always make sure that the marked face that I got from the joiner goes down flat on the bed of the planer. I plane each board down to the exact same thickness. Now this tabletop is three quarters of an inch thick and it's gonna be all walnut. Once all those got planed down to the correct thickness, which was three quarters of an inch thick, I took them back over to my workbench and I started marking out where I wanted to cut the biscuits. I use a biscuit joiner to go through and cut those biscuits. Now biscuits are only there to help you align each board, make sure that they're not off of each other when you glue them up. Um, when you have a cutting board or something small like that, you don't need that because there's not a lot of space, so I hardly ever, I just use glue. This doesn't help it adhere together. The biscuits don't do that. What they do is they help align the board so you don't have one board that's higher than the other board. That's what it's made for. Um, now I use Tight Bond 3 uh, glue. I absolutely love this glue. I've never had any issues with it. I use it all the time. 
So I cut the biscuits, I apply glue to each board end, I insert the biscuits, and I glue them up using my Bessie Parallel Clamps. Now while they're gluing up, um, you can scrape off the glue on the top side. I always have the top side facing up, that way I can get as much glue off as possible. Then you can just use a wet rag or you can um, scrape it off with a paint scraper, which is what I did in this video. Now I let that sit overnight. I let make sure that the glue has plenty of time to cure in my shop. I come back the next day and I unclamp the tabletop. After it's unclamped, I go through and I mark off how to square it up. Now if you see on the ends, they're not even, which is okay because I just use my circular saw to cut off the end, square the entire tabletop up. So I go through with my circular saw and cut the end off and make sure that it's square to both sides. Now the tabletop is completely done dimensional wise, right? So it's the width is where I want it, the length is where I want it. It's completely done that way. Now it's starting to sand. Now I start to initially sand everything with a high grit I used 60 grit here and then I went and moved up to 100 grit. Now I do that just for the initial sanding, make sure everything's flat on both sides, flip the table over, um, do the back side, do the top. Then I wanna fill in all the knots. I use Starbond adhesive, which is a CA glue. I use it all the time. I have an affiliate link below. If you are interested, you also get a 10% off with my code. So check that out in the description. So this, this star bond's great. I fill in the small knots with the thick uh, CA glue, and then I spray it with an accelerator. It hardens within seconds and you can sand within minutes. It's way faster than epoxy. So I sand down all the CA glue, all the star bond, and out every knot is filled. It's very easy. Now it's time to finish the sanding process. So now I go through and sand from the 100 I was at all the way to 400. I usually do 100, 220, then 400. Um, after the sanding process is done on the back and the top. So after sanding to the 400 grit, I route the edges. I'm using a chamfered bit on my router and I'm doing the top and bottom with this profile. A lot of times I just do the bottom, which I think looks really cool and having that flat squared top but this time I wanna actually put a chamfered edge around both, so that's what I'm doing. I use that chamfer bit and put it around every edge on this table. Now it's time to raise the grain. If you don't know what that is, it's putting water on the tabletop, which actually raises the fibers in the wood that you weren't able to sand off or the, while sanding they get pushed down. Well, when you just put on oil or on top of that, it's gonna stand up. It's not gonna feel as smooth as you could get it. So if you raise the grain using some water, which is what I've done here, what it'll raise that, those fibers, you can sand off one last time, and then you're good to go. Now I'm using an oil-based finish, so you don't wanna put a sopping amount of water on there, but you do want it just damp enough so that those fibers raise, and it's pretty easy to tell when that happens. As soon as you start wiping it with water, and the rag, you should be able to feel those fibers raise up and it's a lot more rough than it was when you just sanded it. Now it's time to apply the poly. Now this is just a wipe on oil-based poly from Watco, I believe that's the brand name. Um, but anyway, it's a very simple process. This is just a rag. You pour the poly on, you put it on. Now this isn't my favorite finish, but it is the one I had on hand and it was one that I could get in the time frame that I needed this for the client. Um, now it, it does work great, it's just a longer process. One finish I love to use is Armor Seal by General Finishes, which is a uh, well, it's pretty much the same process, but I really love that finish. It's easier to apply. Um, but this one's pretty simple as well. 
You pour the poly on, you wipe it all around, you let it soak in for four to five hours, then you can apply another coat. Um, it, it actually turned out really, really well. I love seeing the oil on the poly. It is fantastic, the grain that just gets exposed. Now in between coats, I use a quadruple zero steel wool to sand down just softly the finish between coats. This really helps uh, bring out that finish and make it a really soft, smooth finish at the end. This is a really, really fun project. Uh, I love working with walnut. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's really simple. Um, now, if you have any critiques, any questions, shoot them down below. Uh, this isn't the only way to do this. You know, you could do something in the joiner different or you switch up the process between planing and the table saw to cut down to the dimensions. You can do either or. I mean, this isn't an exact science, but this is the way I've done it for a while and this is the way I, I find to be very successful. I wanna thank Delta and all their tools that helped me in my shop um, and just their sponsorship for this channel. Make sure that you go send them a message, tell them that you saw this video and that you liked it. If you have any questions on any of their tools, shoot them down below. Check out any of my other builds, including the vintage trailer rebuild, which was a fun project, maybe the modern pergola or the outdoor backyard theater, which was also a ton of fun. Check out all those videos. Let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.